What's up guys, welcome back to the poker vlog. This is episode number 72, and for this one, we play a session in Seattle at Redbirds Hideaway. Uh, it's a meetup game. We get into some really big hands, some interesting spots. I think you're going to enjoy it a lot. Let's go ahead and get started. It's almost time to start the game. People are filtering in. We take our seat and buy in for a thousand. The blinds are two and five dollars, but it's spread limit, so we're only able to bet amounts between five and three hundred. We don't get much to play in the beginning. Then we pick up seven six of hearts in the big blind. Several players limp. I check my option, and the flop comes seven six deuce with two clubs and one diamond. We got top two. That's going to be the best hand fairly often, so we fire fifteen. Under the gun plus one calls, and so does the button. Three of us see the turn, it's the ten of diamonds. Nine eight makes a straight, and there are two flush draws now. I bet 30. It's on the small side, and with so many bad cards that could come out on the river, I should have bet more to protect my equity, but I failed myself. Under the gun plus one calls, and the button folds, so it's heads up. The river is the three of spades. Five four also gets there now, but the flush draws have all missed. That's what the opponent's going to show up with a lot. So perhaps checking is best. This allows the player an opportunity to bluff with a hand that has little or no value. I'm too worried it'll check back, so instead I bet 90. I want to make it look like a bluff, and I want to punish a potential non-believer. The opponent does believe. He shows 6-4 diamonds and folds it face up for the vlog. Probably would have checked back if he had the option. Tough to get three streets of value from a hand like that. We win it. And by this time, the entire room is filled up. Usually there's only one or two tables running at Redbirds, but tonight it's hopping. We've got all seven going. Even Brian showed up from San Diego. He's probably been to more meetup games than anybody. He flies into Vegas for them all the time, which is pretty awesome. Big thanks to him. An hour and a half into the session, we play a bomb pot. Everyone puts in 20 preflop, and we go straight to the flop. Two players are missing from the table. We contemplate sending out a search and rescue team for them, but we're too wrapped up in all the action. Also, with 9-5 offsuit, I want as few opponents as possible. Seven of us see the flop, and it comes ace-jack-8 with two clubs. Our hand is garbage. No one else seems to have anything either, though. It checks around. The turn is the jack of clubs. Checks to me. A few players had mentioned earlier that they thought I was playing tight, so I'd been looking for a time to cash in on that image. With so much money in the pot, and with no one showing much interest so far, why not fire into six other players with a weak flush draw on a paired board? I try to donate 55. Under the gun plus two calls and the big blind calls as well. Three of us see the river. It's the queen of spades. We got nothing still. The big blind checks. I bet 175. This is going to look very strong since I bet turn when everyone is still in the hand. And with two callers, I make another significant bet on the river. I'm representing full houses, flushes, straights, and possibly even trip jacks. Both players fold. We get one through, relying heavily on how the other players perceived us, and uh, I wouldn't try that one too often. Now I switch to the second table of the night. That's when one of the viewers named Terry hooks it up with 20 bucks. He said that should go towards buying Andrew and I a burger from Dick's Drive-In. That's a chain out there in Seattle. Thanks a lot, Terry. Those burgers sounded delicious. Have to be honest, I didn't get the chance to go. I pocketed the cash. Not quite sure what to do about it now, but I promise to go the next time I'm in Seattle, which might not be too far from now. And if you email me or message me, Terry, I'll take you out to lunch or dinner when I'm out there. Moving on, here we pick up pocket sevens under the gun plus one. Under the gun opens a 20, his name's Alan. I call, we're heads up and the flop comes 865 rainbow, great flop. The player checks, I've got one pair with an open-ended straight draw, I bet 25. The player eventually calls, but doesn't seem strong. I get the feeling he has two high cards. The turn is the nine of diamonds giving us the straight. The opponent checks again. Probably doesn't have anything he'd be able to call a bet with, and I don't have to worry about protecting my equity. There aren't many devastating rivers other than a seven and the Sidorum, which is basically liquid garbage. I check back to make it look like I was just firing as a bluff on the flop and have now given up. 
I'm hoping this will induce a bluff from the player on the river, or perhaps I'll hit a card that will give him a decent, but still second best hand. The river is the king of diamonds, the backdoor flush gets there, onto the gun checks, no reason to be worried that we're beat, I bet 65. The opponent makes the call, I turn over the straight, it's good, the player tells me later that he had king 10 and rivered top pair. Next we pick up ace jack of diamonds, under the gun plus 1, and raise to 15. The hijack calls, we're heads up, the flop comes, king jack 5 rainbow, got middle pair and some backdoor draws. I check it to the hijack who'd been playing pretty aggressively, he bets 20. I call, the turn is the 8 of diamonds, I pick up some equity if I am behind. I check and the hijack fires again, this time for 55. I call, the river is the 9 of diamonds, we make the nuts with the ace high flush, there are lots of two pair combinations, some straight possibilities, and of course, flush possibilities as well. Again, I'm in a situation in which I don't want this to get checked through, so I bet large, I make it 175, but it's in green chips, so it's only like seven chips to call, that's nothing. Player ends up folding, later tells me that he only had a jack. On to the next table, and shortly after taking my seat, I pick up pocket aces under the gun, I open to 15. Under the gun plus one calls, the button calls, the small blind calls, and the big blind calls. Everyone's trying to ruin my day. It's gonna be tough though, because we flop what is referred to as quads. That's right, not just clickbait, it actually happened. Wouldn't do you like that. Checks to me, I wanna get maximum value, so I bet 300. This bet looks weird, but it's designed to look weird. There's no other way to get paid when you flop a hand this strong. You have to hope one of your opponents either doesn't believe you and calls light, or drilled the flop too. With four other players involved, there's a good chance I'm up against somebody who wants to get on the vlog and is gonna call light, or who has pocket fives. Just kidding. Sorry to waste a lot of you guys' time. That didn't really happen. I did flop quads, but I checked the flop. So did everybody else. The turn is a jack. There are two clubs out there now. Checks to me again. This time, I bet 15. It's a tiny bet. I'm hoping to get calls from really weak hands or perhaps induce a bluff. Under the gun plus one calls and the small blind calls as well. Not sure what their plan is for the river, but I'm looking forward to seeing it. Dealer puts out another five, which is a great card. Small blind checks, I bet 50. Under the gun plus one, surprisingly, raises to 125. The small blind folds back on me. I'm hoping that somehow the opponent has a fifth ace. I re-raise to 300. The opponent folds, I table my hand. Eventually, the player reveals that he had six five of hearts. We end up getting a great run out and win close to the maximum. Here we pick up ace eight suited in the big blind. Doug, who had the fives full of aces in the previous hand, opens the 15 from under the gun. The button calls, the small blind calls as well. It's only 10 more to me, I'm not going anywhere. Four of us see the flop and it comes queen five deuce rainbow. So we've got some backdoor draws with an over. Everyone checks, the turn is the king of clubs giving us a flush draw. The small blind leads for 20. I could call, but instead I raise to 70, giving me an opportunity to win the pot right now without making a hand. And if I get called, I can either drill the flush or bluff at it on the river. Folds back to the small blind, and he makes the call. The river's no help, it's the jack of spades. The small blind checks. I bet 135, continuing the story that I've got a big hand, like two pair, a set. Or maybe I was semi-bluffing the turn with a big draw and made a straight. The player quickly folds, so we're two for two with our bluff attempts today. If you thought the run good was over, a few cowboys have something to say about that. We're in the hijack and open to 15. The cutoff, Doug with the short stack, three bets to 45. The button calls, what a dream. I four bets to 215, that caps the pre-flop betting. The cutoff goes all in for less and the button eventually folds. The board runs out 77383. Not too bad for us, except the cutoff has pocket aces and we got smoked. It's possible that the run good's over. I head to the fourth table of the night and pick up 7-6 offsuit in the small blind. Three players limp in, I call, the big blind checks, and the flop is 5-4-3 with two spades, we flop the nuts, it's possible to run goods back. Checks to the button, he bets 10, I've got some options here I could call or I could raise, I end up flatting, the big blind then raises to 50. Bold back to me, I just flat again, 
And the turn is another five. Not a great card in case I was up against two pair or a set. I check. The big blind bet 75. Not going to fold for that price. Re-raising here doesn't make much sense either in case I'm beat. I call. The river is the jack of diamonds. I check again. The big blind bets 90. It's a pretty small bet. My read on the situation is that the player has a strong hand, but may be a little concerned. He probably wouldn't bet that small with a boat. And if he doesn't have one, we've got him beat. I raised to 250. He tanks, then eventually makes the call with ace deuce offsuit. We both flop the straight, pretty big cooler situation. We're up 850 on the night, and that's when Corey and Rachel come over to hook it up with some Fremont IPAs from Seattle. Delicious drinks. Thank you guys very much. I'm always happy to try out some local craft beers. Next, we're dealt Ace King offsuit in middle position. I open to 15. The button calls. His name's Nick. He just won the biggest pot of his poker career, which was around 1300. Small blind calls as well, and the flop comes Ace King 10 Rainbow. We've got top two. Keep making big hands. The small blind checks. I bet 40. The button now raises to 125, and this is scary because. He's a 1-2 and 1-3 player primarily, so this is a big bet compared to what he's used to playing. Plus, he just won the biggest pot of his life. I don't think he's trying to give any money back. I don't get the sense that he's bluffing. Small blind, cold calls, so I'm very worried that at least one player has me beat. Still, I can't fold for 85 more with top two on this board. There's still potentially some value hands like ace-10 or king-10 in the mix that I could be up against and I'm beating. Also, there's a small chance I may be up against pair plus straight draw combos. If I'm beat, maybe I can spike an ace or a king as well. I call the 125 and the turn is the four of diamonds. We don't improve, small blind checks, nothing for me to do here except check. The button bets 200. Small blind isn't phased, he raises to 500 which is the maximum since we're playing spread limit. I have a strong hand but I don't see how I can be good here, I reluctantly lay it down. The button folds as well and says he had king 10. Small blind then shows for the vlog that he had the goods with queen jack offsuit for the nuts. The night's wrapping up. I play my last table. Everyone's having a good time. We lose one final bomb pot and rack up, booking a nice win. This is one of my favorite meetup games we've ever done. We got seven full tables going to fill up the whole room. Thanks to everybody who uh, who came out here. Thanks to uh, Redbird who owns this place and all the dealers and everything like that. It's been cool, man. Uh, ran well, won 6.45 on the session and uh, couldn't ask for anything more. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps a lot. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. Uh, I want to give a big thanks to Redbird Tideway for having Andrew and I and having everybody uh, out there for the meetup game. Uh, that was a lot of fun. If you're ever in the area, I highly recommend checking it out because it's a super cool room. Um, also, thanks to everybody who showed up for, for the game. Uh, we just had a really good time. That's probably one of my favorite ones we've ever done. If you happen to be in Las Vegas, um, we're having a meetup game Wednesday, October 10th at 7 p.m. at the Westgate. Jason Somerville is going to be there, so I'm super excited about that. He's uh, one of my all-time favorite poker players. Uh, first person I ever watched playing poker on YouTube. So um, be sure to hang out with Andrew and I and Jason. Uh, I imagine for a lot of you, that's going to be tonight. Anyway, hope you're all doing well. Good luck at the tables, and I'll see you next time.